Okay, did you remember your passport? Did you turn off all the lights? Do you have your book? Is your phone charged? Turns out, it takes a single drop of water about 1,000 years to travel around the world. We also know global warming is changing everything. So that got me wondering, how is climate change messing with the motion of the ocean? Oceans are all about movement, and it starts with sucking in CO2. And there is a lot of extra CO2 in our atmosphere right now, higher levels than at any time in the past 400,000 years because of burning fossil fuels. Now, a bunch of it, as we know, just hangs out in our atmosphere for a long, long time, heating our planet up by creating a giant greenhouse. Some of it is taken up by plants through photosynthesis. Thank you, trees but a huge amount ends up in our oceans. Oceans absorb 30 to 50% of the CO2 produced by burning fossil fuels. Without our oceans, global warming would have already made the planet a lot warmer. How exactly does the ocean consume carbon? First, through basic chemistry. It's just carbon dioxide dissolves in water. H2O plus CO2 equals H2CO3. This is carbonic acid, which literally just breaks apart and reforms as bicarbonate, which is stored in shells and bones of marine organisms. The other way the ocean eats CO2 is through photosynthesis by phytoplankton, which are microscopic plant-like organisms. They generate about half the oxygen in the atmosphere, as much per year as all plants on land. But of course, there is a limit to how much CO2 the ocean can take in. To understand how the ocean is already changing, I connected with Simon Donner, an ocean scientist and climate change communicator who often commutes to work in his kayak. First, he's going to explain the three main ways water moves in our oceans, surface currents, vertical mixing, and the global conveyor belt. Simon, thank you for joining me on a beautiful winter kayak day. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty great, right? It is great. It's a little nippy, but it's great. <laughs> yes. What are all the different ways that the ocean moves? Well, th there's really two main ways that the ocean circulates. The first is what you would feel if you're out like in a sailboat, which is the movement of the water on the surface. And that's just being driven by the winds and by the fact that the planet's rotating. Right. And so it's like a flu, you know, the ocean's a fluid on top of a rotating surface. Wait, I want to know more. Let's go down the rabbit hole. Did you know that an ocean accident inspired scientists and storytellers to learn more about how ocean currents work? So this is a video excerpt from a book by Christiane Dorian called How the World Works. In 1992, a ship carrying cargo from Hong Kong to Seattle ran into stormy weather, an Aleutian low likely in January. 28,000 rubber ducks were lost overboard and oceanographers jumped on the chance to understand more about how surface ocean currents work. So they asked beachcombers all around the world to stay tuned for those rubber ducks. Later that year, those ocean currents carried the first rubber duck to the shores of Alaska. There it is, first rubber duck, hi. And since then, hundreds of ducks have followed those ocean currents all over the world. A lot of them are still ending up on shores. And we're still learning a lot about how ocean currents work. So if you find a rubber duck, it might just be part of the great accident slash great experiment. There's another way that the ocean moves that is really surprising, and it's driven all by like the density of water. So you've got water that's uh, some water that's warmer and that floats a little bit more. You've got water that's, uh, that's got more salt in it and that's denser. And because of that, there's some parts of the ocean where the new deep water gets created and sinks. And that sinking motion causes this slow overturning of the ocean that takes like thousands of years. In a minute, we'll connect ocean motion and climate change. But first, we wanted to ask what you know about all the ways the ocean moves. What I understand is I think it's uh, guided by somehow the moon. So I was thinking I know the moon has yeah. a big part to do with it. That's good. Thank you. Gravity. Thank yeah. You. I think the ocean moves with currents. Any guesses on the different ways that the ocean moves? Yeah. This is actually a jar of the layers of the ocean. 
So it actually mixes up and down, so it moves up and down as well. Did you know that? Nope, I didn't. Can you kind of show us how you think it might mix? Um, yeah, that's good, that's good. Yeah, that's good, that's, that's good. The tumbler motion and then the big conveyor belt. Yeah. That's good, that's good, that's good. And then, yeah, that's good. <laughs> yes. I think it would mix vertically. Rather, you take two liquids, one's denser than the other. I'm pretty sure the more denser liquid would sink to the bottom. The less dense liquid would sink on top, would go on top. Basically, it'll go like, let's say you poured it in, it'll go. Well, you nailed it. How, how is this body of water connected to all the oceans around the world? I mean, the oceans obviously are all connected. But there's this grand movement of water that takes thousands of years, and it's because of these differences in density. And, and people call it the, the Great Ocean Conveyor Belt. Uh, scientists call it the thermohaline circulation. And what it is, is that there are some parts of the ocean, particularly in the North Atlantic, where the water is denser at the surface. It's cold and it's salty. And so water sinks in that part of the ocean.